So it is now possible to run a stable diffusion on Apple Silicon natively. Apple have taken care of this. So you can be running stable diffusion natively on your Mac Studio or your iPad. What I'll do is just discuss the basics of getting started. And uh, if you don't know what stable diffusion is, it is a technique for getting beautiful images like this one here. Uh, maybe an image representing Apple and stable diffusion coming from different universes, meeting together and hopefully about to have a very productive time uh, using simple text prompts, as was the case in here. Although the text prompt I used to get this wasn't that simple. <laughs> But uh, that's the basic idea. You put in a text prompt, it gives you what you're looking for. Now, um, the benefits of running Stable Diffusion locally, you can, of course, run it on the Internet on Hugging, uh, hugging Face. But uh, running it locally gives you more power. It takes away the costs of having a server if you're running your own server or if you're purchasing a server at time. Um, it means you've got greater privacy as well. So what we want to do is to take a look at the processes of getting started. We'll start off at GitHub, where there's a project called Apple ML Stable Diffusion. This has been recently updated. And what they've done is given us the usual kind of examples of images that you can create with Stable Diffusion, system requirements for model conversion, project build, target device runtime, target device runtime with memory improvements, and then target device hardware generation. Now, look, uh, the target device hardware generation is M1 Mac, iPad M1, uh, and iPhone A14. They give us uh, performance benchmarks uh, from a fairly paltry 1.3 diffusion speed. So this is the one that I would normally use to, to, to measure the, the speed. So quite recently at WWDC 23, we saw the Mac Pro launched and that new Mac Pro goes up to 192 gigabytes of unified memory. And that's impressive. That is really impressive. It's the kind of stuff we don't have on Windows. And it's something you'll be able to take advantage of, hopefully, quite a lot when you're using Stable Diffusion. And the, the, Apple is investing quite a lot in machine learning. But in any case, these are the diffusion speeds. And the diffusion speeds, particularly when we look at the M1 uh, Ultras, they're very, very respectable. Um, quite good for the iPad Pro M2. And a little bit, just a little bit painful when we go be, be below that. Uh, they have got quite a lot of resources here and they, they also have control net, which is a really cool feature that allows you to create images just by drawing a scribble. So they've got all the machine learning stuff uh, going on there. One thing to be aware of, this is the same page. I just highlighted this here. They have a warning. This command will download several gigabytes worth of PyTorch checkpoints from Hugging Face. Please ensure that you're on Wi-Fi and have enough space. Might not mean very much to you, but the main thing is when you run this command, you're going to get gigabytes of checkpoints. Checkpoints are basically the models that you use. Some of these are like two gigabytes. Some of these guys are four gigabytes. So you're going to need memory and you don't want to run out of memory. You're going to need disk space, not memory. You're going to need disk space. You do not want to run out of disk space when you're running uh, stable diffusion. It gets painful when you do that. It doesn't, you know, on. On devices I've used, it just doesn't even tell you. You run out of disk space. You kind of have to figure out. And you can get easily to tens and tens of gigabytes of uh, models very, very easily. So be careful with that. They've got quite a lot of information on optimizing models. Again, we're getting fairly technical here. Some of you guys will definitely want this. And there's also a, a link to a video. I'm not going to link to any of these. You can get to these from that other web page. Uh, this, I think, was updated after the WWC 23 conference. And it contains quite a lot of information that you might find useful. So that's basically where we are with Stable Diffusion. I think with the ability of Apple devices to bring a lot of unified memory and with a kind of investment that Apple are making uh, in, in, into machine learning on Apple devices, that is something that's very promising. 
currently on the Windows platform, everything is dominated by Nvidia and hopefully with their new products and all of this investment going into machine learning, Apple will be able to give some reasonable competition to Nvidia. But let's see what happens. Have fun in the meantime. Yeah.